Breaking tonight, Hillary Clinton under mounting pressure tonight from the left and the right to shut the doors of her Clinton Foundation once and for all. And tonight, the Clintons are fighting back, big time. Welcome to The Kelly File, everyone. I'm Megan Kelly. 24 hours ago, we brought you a stunning report from the Associated Press suggesting Hillary Clinton held many, many meetings with Clinton Foundation donors while she was supposed to be doing the American people's business. The AP found that of the 154 people from private interests who met or had phone conversations with then Secretary of State Clinton, more than half, or 85 of them, gave money to her foundation, the Clinton Foundation, for a combined total of $156 million. The Clinton campaign, campaign quickly hitting back, saying this report is flawed. And earlier today at a campaign stop, former President Bill Clinton chimed in. Watch. We're trying to do good things. If there's something wrong with creating jobs and saving lives, I don't know what it is. And the, the people who gave the money knew exactly what they were doing. And I have nothing to say about it. I'm very accept. I'm really proud. I'm proud of what they've done. We begin tonight with our chief intelligence correspondent, Catherine Herridge, reporting from Washington. Catherine? Megan, tonight the Associated Press is standing its ground after Hillary Clinton's team tried and failed to get a correction. The Clinton campaign complained on the morning shows that this AP tweet was unfair, not accurate, and based on limited information. By our count, there were over 1,700 other meetings that she had. You know, she was Secretary of State. She was meeting with foreign officials and government officials uh, constantly. So to pull all of them out of the equation, cherry pick a very small number of meetings uh, is, is, is pretty outrageous. And the White House defended Clinton telling reporters that even before she became Secretary of State, there was a transparency agreement. To ensure that uh, the ethics requirements that w are in place uh, went above and beyond those guidelines that are set by law. But the Associated Press says their reporting is based on documents released by a federal court after they had to sue the State Department and it took three years for the AP to get the Clinton schedules that show the foundation donors and it made sense to analyze meetings outside her regular government duties as secretary quote this reporting was done by the same AP investigative team that discovered Mrs. Clinton's private email server and whose reporting last week resulted in the resignation of Donald Trump's top campaign strategist. Megan? Catherine Herridge, thank you. In just a few moments, we're going to speak with Congressman Trey Gowdy, who just got back from Capitol Hill, where he personally re re reviewed some of the FBI's documents from its investigation into Hillary Clinton's private email server. He'll tell us what he found. But first, we are joined by Roland Martin, host and managing editor of TV One's News One Now. Roland, great to have you on the program. Thank you for being here. Great to be here. So what do you make of this, of the Clinton Foundation? As uh, we're just looking through the publications today, USA Today, Boston Globe, New York Post, Detroit News, Daily Beast, all saying this thing ought to be shut down at a minimum if she wins. Well, first and foremost, uh, if, if she wins the presidency, you will have her as president. You will have former President Bill Clinton serving as uh, first uh, husband, if you will. Uh, I do believe what they should do is transition out of business uh, because even though they've done phenomenal work, you're now you're now the commander in chief. You're now the leader of the free world. Uh, and so, look, I sit. I sit on a group of 50 can uh, education group. Uh, students first. We merge transferred assets. And so, you can do that. You can partner with an existing NGO to do the work. But do you think it's shady can't now? Have a what, do you, what do you think huh? of the existence of it now? Laura Ingram was on uh, Fox earlier, calling the, the Clinton Foundation a machine for influence peddling. She's suggesting that they use it. They use it well, to sort of, you know, to get donations. They use her power as Secretary of State uh, to sort of convince people to donate to their foundation. Well, first of all, I would, agree, I would disagree with that because let, let's keep in mind, she's a former first lady. She's a former United States senator. I think she probably has a hell of a lot more relationships, uh, even if she wasn't Secretary of State. And the reality is the work that they're doing as an NGO across the world is critically important. You have President Jimmy Carter, who probably comes closest to having uh, his own organization that does work around the world. It's very rare to, frankly, have a former president that has this type of entity. So I would say Laura is absolutely wrong. She certainly has an ax to grind here. I don't. Uh, the bottom line is here. They do good work, but I do believe what the Clinton folks have to understand
understand is it's not simply just a question of what took place in meetings. It's also the appearance. And so I think one of the things that they should do, and they really should do this, they should say after Labor Day, they are going to suspend accepting any funds into the foundation because you're in the middle of a presidential campaign. I believe be far more proactive as opposed to reactive. That's what the Clintons should be doing. Roland, do you like her? I know that you're a big supporter of President Obama's. What do you think of her? I've met her. Um, she, she's a nice woman. I've been critical uh, of her, just like I've been critical of the president. Uh, last time I interviewed him was seven years ago, so it's not like uh, we've been buddy-buddy. Uh, but uh, again, just like anybody who's in political office, you know, I have a very simple philosophy, Megan. If you do good, I'll talk about you. If you do bad, I'll talk about you. At the end of the day, I'll talk about you. <laughs> Before I let you go, because that was a great sign-off, but I have to ask you, are you open-minded to Donald Trump? Uh, here's the deal. I have interviewed a significant number of African Americans, and I have been asking the exact same question over and over and over. Where is your plan? Uh, look, I voted for Republicans before, uh, so this ain't the first time. I look at individuals, but the problem for me is this here. Donald Trump gives great comments. It's on a bumper sticker, but there's no specificity. There's no plans. And then when he keeps, when he keeps saying stuff that you t come back and say, wait a minute, that's not true. I got a problem when you simply, as somebody running for office, cannot even tell me me, how are you going to pay for your tax plan? You don't talk about HBCUs. You talk about African Americans, but then where's your plan? I'm sorry. He's all hat, no cattle. That's what we say in my native Texas. <laughs> Roland, great to see you. Thanks for being here. Likewise. Thanks a lot. Joining us now in a Kelly File exclusive, South Carolina Congressman Trey Gowdy, the former chairman of the Select Committee on Benghazi. Great to see you, sir. So today you, you had an interesting day taking a look at some documents uh, that the FBI had prior to you getting a look at them. Did you find anything particularly interesting about these documents that Hillary provided the FBI? Uh, yes, ma'am. Um, keep in mind, one notebook were the classified emails that she uh, handled so negligently. The other notebook are the witness interviews, the summaries, what, what we call 302s. My number one takeaway, Megan, is there's no reason in the world you could not and should not be able to look at the same witness interviews that I had to go to Washington and look at in a classified setting. You and your viewers should be able to read summaries of these witness interviews. Mm -hmm. The second takeaway is a lot of the FBI's time and attention was spent debunking and refuting these fantastically false statements that Secretary Clinton made at the inception of this email story. And the third takeaway, remember Director Comey said that he could not indict, did not have a realistic uh, probability of a successful prosecution on the issue of intent. So I looked to see what witnesses were questioned on the issue of intent, including her, uh, and I didn't see that many questions. Let's go back uh, to number two. Issue. Let's go back to the second point, which is how much time they had to spend debunking what you say were lies or falsehoods that she told. What, what do you mean by that? Oh, even I mean, even something as as seemingly innocuous as us referring to Sidney Blumenthal as her advisor. Remember, she got really upset when we use that term. You'll never guess which term the FBI used when they described Sidney Blumenthal and his relationship to her. He was interviewed. Uh, I think you would find very interesting uh, what Colin Powell had to say uh, and juxtapose that with what Clinton supporters have said over the last 48 hours. You go back, the multiple devices, how many phones she had, the very reason she set it up, all of that proved to be fantastically I, And I want to ask you, I want to ask you this. So she also, of course, claimed that um, she never sent or received classified information. We now know that that's not true. I know you thought it might be interesting if the American people could see who sent some of the emails that she received with the classified information. What do you mean by that? Why would that be so interesting? Uh, well, right now, uh, even Congress can't see the identities of them. They are so classified that even a congressman in a skiff with no telephone, no iPad, no notes, cannot even see who the author or the originator of that email string was. That is how classified that information was that she was handling on a non-secure server. Mm -hmm. So you, Sidney Blumenthal is one author. Of course, you know Cheryl Mills and Numa Abedin and, and Jake Sullivan, but there are even some originators that even members of Congress cannot see the identity of them because of the nature of the information. Mm -hmm. but, but meanwhile, she was saying, I had no idea. No, I classified. No, I had no. Congressman Trey Gowdy, great to see you. Thank you for being here. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.
Also tonight, new reason for Hillary Clinton to be very concerned about a potential October surprise. The fugitive founder of the controversial group WikiLeaks is here in an exclusive interview on the information he holds and what it may mean for Mrs. Clinton. Don't miss Julian Assange. You know, right now, according to the average of all polls, she's beating Donald Trump by 5.5 uh, points nationwide. She's way ahead of him in most of the swing states, not all. Do you believe the information in your possession could be a game changer in the U.S. election? 